Hello and welcome to another edition of the No Name Never Football Show, the Burnley podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bromley, and what a week it has been for the Mighty Clarets. They kicked it off with an emphatic victory away at Norwich to give them one step closer to the Premier League. Against all the odds as well, we were told that there would be no team. As it turns out, they didn't need it. They just needed three goals and another three points on the board. That was followed up a couple of days later with a fourth round of victory at home to Ipswich to cement their place in the fifth round of the FA Cup and a home tie against Fleetwood. Just one game against a lower league opposition at home and they're in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. This season just keeps getting better for Vincent Kompany's men. This week, the Clarets entertain Preston North End. It's a Lancashire derby at Turf Moor. And the team are here this week to have a look ahead at that game and see whether or not the Clarets can make this a history-making season. Will they make this 10 wins on the bounce? Will there be three points closer to promotion and maybe a championship title? I am joined this week by resident statistician Dave Roberts and FPL expert and analysis show team member Adam Dennett to give you all the facts and look ahead to that championship fixture. Here we go. Now, on the Known and Ever podcast and football show, we do like to analyse our opposition celebrity fans. Certainly in the second half of the season when we've already looked at head-to-head and who we played for both, etc, etc. We have done that again this week. And Dave, you have pulled us out some absolute corkers for our celebrity fan fixture. But you had a bit of a problem getting this list pulled together that I saw. Uh, we did, yeah, the start of the week, it was looking a bit dicey. Uh, we thought we might have to rely on uh, mascots and cartoon characters uh, to top up the list of PNE celebrity fans. So we had uh, Deepdale Duck along with Wallace and Gromit. They were there on standby to step up to the mark. Uh, even the North End fan who ripped up her programme in disgust after <laughs> a team's last-minute defeat at Turf Moor in a soon-to-be-heard memory match was in the running. But uh, the Preston fans have come good and have made some suggestions that now at least give their list of celebrity fans uh, some sort of air of respectability. Uh, So uh, do you want to give us the names of the six uh, we've chosen? Uh, I I certainly do, Dave. I certainly do. I'm just going to bring up our um, script here so I know where I've got to because I can't remember these off the head. Now, at number one, Dave has ranked Andrew Freddy Flintoff, retired cricketer, TV presenter, and part-time Manchester City fan. I'm not sure I'm putting him number one on the list of Preston fans, but he does come in there at number one. Number two, Nick Park, the animator at Ardman. Of course, Wallace and Gromit, who Dave has already mentioned. Uh, Third on the list, Ian McCulloch, Echo and the Bunnyman singer. Bunnymen, is that right? Bunnyman? Bunnymen, I think. Um, Next on the list, coming in at number four, is Wade Barrett, whose real name is Stu Bennett. He's a former wrestler with 1.2 million Twitter followers, which is impressive considering I do not know who he is. Um, I can see why this this list was struggling a little bit, Dave. Uh, Coming in at number five, we've got Steve Borthwick, a former rugby union player and current England head coach. And finally, coming in at number six is Jess Taylor, um, who is a singer with uh, one of the noughties, I think, girl band, well, mixed group, Liberty X. Now, Adam... Last week, we had a very impressive list of celebrity Norwich fans who ended up getting nine out of ten and so far leading the table in terms of quality of opposition fans. I get an inkling that you're probably not going to give Preston fans nine out of ten for that list. Uh, it's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, I'd, I wouldn't have been able to name um, any famous Pre- Preston fans. Uh, I wasn't obviously wasn't aware that Nick Park were a Preston fan. Flint off the picture is him in a city shirt, so that I think says it all. And um, yeah, I've not not really heard of of the others on the list, so uh, I don't know if I'm the right person to give a score. But I'd I'd probably go. <laughs> go on, I'm give us a score. Three out of ten for me. Maybe three out of ten. Wow, that's really harsh, Dave. You are our moderator. Are you going to allow Preston really. fans three out of I'm ten? Not- I'm not getting involved. I, I put the list okay. out there and uh, I leave it to others to, uh, to decide. You're not 
not getting involved. It's your job. <laughs> you are <laughs> the pre future moderator. That's what I, you I, have I, to do. Come on. Are I you allowed to do that? Out of got the list. I, I think three is a bit harsh. I'd, I'd okay. have gone higher than that. So go on. Give us, give us the moderated score. Well, I, I was going to go for five. Should we go halfway and go for four? That'll do, mate. So, Preston fans, I'm right. sorry to say you are currently bottom of our league table, although there is still half a season the remainder to go. So, you may get off the bottom of the table. But right now, I'm afraid to say that you are ranking quite low in our celebrity opposition fan list. Okay, moving on to the game itself. And I think before we actually start to analyse how we think the game's going to go, just a quick word about our referee. It's going to be 14-year-old, 14-year-old. We do not have a junior referee playing this game. Don't be young these days. Yes, I mean, I know the championship standard of refereeing isn't that great, but I assure you we're not going down to 14-year-olds. 40-year-old, I'm afraid to say. 40-year-old Darren Bond of Ormskirk will take charge of the match this Saturday afternoon. He has had the whistle for three previous Burnley matches and we haven't won any of them. That does not look good. Uh, following a 2-2 draw against Leeds United at Turf Moor in the League Cup in 2017, the visitors progressed after a penalty shootout and his other two matches have been this season. They were 1-1 draw at home to Luton Town in August and the 5-2 defeat against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane in November. So there you go. That is going to be your referee. Adam, let's start with you, please. We're going to preview this game. Um, the Clarets just keep relentlessly marching on in the Championship. Before we start this, well, actually, as it stands at the moment, before we play the games on Saturday, they are seven points clear at the top of the table uh, above Sheffield United in second place, 17 points clear of Borough in third place. They are a nine-game winning streak. If they win at the weekend against Preston, they will equal the club's record, which has been in place since 1913. We haven't scored 10 consecutive games since 19... Sorry, won 10 consecutive games since 1913. And interestingly, 10 consecutive wins in the Championship is Reading's... is a current Championship um, record, which is Reading's from... 2006. So the Clarets this weekend have an opportunity to get themselves into the record books. Um, that said, Adam, Derby, Derby, Derby. How, given Burnley's current form, given Preston's current form, which is a little bit fluctuating, they, they tend to be very strong away from home, though. I think they've actually got the best away record in the division. How much stock do we put in the fact that this is a derby and all normal rules go out the window? Uh, if you probably we've done well, we've done very well in derby so far this season. I think we've obviously drew at Preston at home to Blackpool, um, but uh, in the game game against Wigan and then Rovers at home, we've we've performed performed really well. Um, you've got to be confident going into the game. Preston, although obviously Blackburn are. Our, Big local, big local rivals in the game we care the most about. Um, like I'm, I'm in my thirties and in in the late nineties and through the noughties, Preston was the derby game really. Yeah. Um, until until we got that promotion in two thousand and nine, we were probably the most competitive fixture, and it it were always like we were at the top of Division Two with them, uh, with Stan, and then competing at the top of the Championship in the early noughties. And then even in our promotion season, uh, 2009, they made the playoffs. So it, it felt like we've been on similar paths up until we did get that promotion and they lost in a playoff final and um, and had a couple of near misses and not quite got there. And and since that point, we've we've kind of kicked on and um, and they've gone a bit bit in the opposite direction. So um, you, you've got to say we will we will be strong favourites going into the game. Um, we were the f the fact that we were still well looked unstoppable at Norwich and had the core of our side out of the team: Murich missing, Howard Bellis, Cork, Rodriguez, Benson, all big players, and and we still made it. Okay, I think Norwich played into our hands at the start of the game, but we we just played the game perfectly, and just when they looked like getting back into it, Vinny um, brought on Vitinho, and now we're a bit shocked that he took Teller off. I thought he was cause them some problems and first touch bang two nil game over yeah so it, it it's pressing like you said have been a bit shaky like a lot of the championship teams this season there's just no consistency there 
Uh, they've won 11, lost 11, and they're still only four points off the playoffs. So they've got they've still got a lot to play for. Um, I'd expect them to to come and and set off and uh, set up and be difficult to beat. It was quite a scrappy game at Deepdale early on in the season. Um, we one didn't one really... that wasn't it? Was it a draw? One, yeah, one. one apiece. Yeah, two early goals, and then we didn't really threaten that much after that. But I think we were still getting um, we were still trusting the process at that stage. Weren't oh we? gosh, and uh, we got End there the quite days. after that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, really confident. Um, I think we'll we'll see some big players come back in, and mm. I can't say anything other than um, than record breaking clarets this weekend. Love it, um, Dave. Obviously, we did have that threatened um, selection headache for that Norwich game. We were being warned about kids playing no keeper. Goodness knows what, and it turned out it wasn't as bad as we first feared. Um, VK did say to us that it, we were expecting by the time it came to the pressing game that all the talk would be on what a ridiculous squad we had and how we just had players to spare. Who do you think misses out the weekend? Who do you, assuming that everybody's fit, which we think they are, where do you where do you put each player? Who do you play? Uh, well, I think in terms of what's been said in the press conferences and the pre-match, um, it looks like Jay Rodriguez won't be involved. Okay. Uh, but it sounds like everyone everyone else will be. Um, yeah, he's got some real choices ahead of him there. I think um, looking at central defence, that's uh, presumably Bayer's is going to come straight back in after yeah. being rested for the cup game. It's who you play alongside him. He's got. Uh, two very good options. Well, he's got three options, hasn't he, really? Because there's obviously Charlie Taylor who could play there as well. Um, will it be uh, Ek Daly had such a good game, scored in his debut? Um, and then uh, Alda Keel as well has also come in and done really well. They've both sort of hit the ground running and both look equally capable of uh, stepping in. So that's the first decision to make, perhaps. Um, okay, and then make that decision. You do this to me all the time, Dave Roberts, not letting you be a politician. You make that decision. Who are you bringing in out of those two? Uh, I suspect he might bring Ekdal back in after yeah, playing well at Norwich. Yeah, I, I suspect. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's got options there. Um, I think in terms of the forward players, um, I think you'd like to see as the Rory start, Teller start. Um, you, um, Benson, we think probably will be available. I think he's m- more likely to have a a role bench from role. the bench. Yeah, that's, that's more likely. Um, and then who do you play up front? I think p- probably Ashley Barnes. I think the way Ashley yeah. Barnes has played, um, it's, he, he, he was making space for other players, had a really good game down at Norwich. I think he's uh, he obviously came on and had a bit of a cameo role right at the end in the cup game against Ipswich. Um, but I think he probably he probably starts for me on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I tend to agree, actually. I think the, the re- I, I forget what number of reincarnation we're on of Ashley Barnes at the moment, but he's doing everything we ask him to, Adam. Um, Charlotte touched on this earlier on in the show. Um, those of the viewers who are watching the show through YouTube will have missed this section, but podcast listeners will have heard this. Um, Ashley Barnes, every time he gets a sniff of being written off, he proves us wrong and he comes back again. And, and all we can say to you is that he, he consistently tries to learn he tries to improve himself and even at this stage in his career he's carrying on doing and I think at the moment he's probably first to start do you agree yeah and I didn't think I'd be in a no. position where I'd be saying that again especially earlier on this season um before obviously his Blackburn heroics and even like over the last year or two I've, I've thought he were finished um but he, he's really rolling back at the the years at the moment and he he showed how good he can be on the ball mm. at Norwich. I thought, obviously, yeah, he was strong, uh, but he was dropping deep in that number 10 behind Teller quite a lot in the first half and spraying balls about and just, yeah, he looked back to back to his 2017-18 best um, and he just looks like he's really enjoying playing with this young, mm. hungry group of players and they seem to love him as well. Yeah. Um, just the, the pictures of him running away celebrating that first goal oh. with Teller and Zaruri, it's... Uh, yeah, you just need to see it, and um, like I said, I think he's he's got to be first choice at the moment. Uh, Jay's been a bit in and out with injury, and and obviously not scored for a while. But I don't, I don't think goals are as important now. And I've always put the emphasis on goals for mm-hmm. um, the strikers, particularly for Burnley. I think he's only scored two. He's only scored those two against Blackburn in the league. 
this season. I think he scored some cup goals, I think, but and it it doesn't really matter because it just creates space for other other players. And um, I still think he was a bit shaky early on, but right now he's he's I think he's got to start. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, all right, Dave, I'm going to come to you first with this one, and don't be giving me no one one crap, please. Um. <laughs> Bearing in mind, they've uh, been a bit shy in front of goal of Preston. They seem to be all right, particularly away from home defensively, but they're not particularly free-flowing scorers. I want you to give me a prediction, please, a score prediction ahead of the game. Well, as we know, form often goes out the window for Derby games, so I'm going to predict a comfortable Burnley win, 2 now. Yes, there you go. Well done. You see, you've got it in you, Dave. You've got the percent there. You've got it, you know, you've got it in you. I'm, and I'm, this is recorded. I'm going to, I'm very much going to make you, hold you to this. Um, Adam, same to you, please. Can I have a score prediction? I'm going to stick to what I was going to say before, even though Dave said it, 2-0. 2-0. So. Excellent. Well, your Brommers Bankers this week, for those of you who do like to have a little cheeky flutter on um, my score prediction, which did come true for the West Brom game. Now, if you are going to do this, listeners, please A, gamble responsibly. Better still, please use either a free bet or just do it friendly because, or don't do it at all because um, I very rarely get these wrong. Uh, right, sorry. Very rarely get them wrong. I always get them wrong. Very rarely get these right. But my Brommers Bankers for Burnley against Preston is going to be Burnley 3, Preston 0. Uh, okay. Uh, before we let you let our listeners go and we move away from the preview of that Preston game, Dave, you do have a, a miscellaneous stat for us, please. Why don't you dive deep into those pockets of yours and give our viewers and our listeners your miscellaneous stat of the week? Yeah, Burnley's victory over Norwich City at Carrow Road was our ninth consecutive league victory. And if you think that sounds impressive, you'd be right as the club has only ever achieved nine consecutive league wins on two other occasions. Uh, they were in 1991, when Jimmy Mullen took over initially as caretaker manager before being given the role permanently. And we won our first nine league games with him in charge in the fourth division before a 1-1 draw at home to Scunthorpe United. Uh, the other occasion, as you have mentioned earlier, Natalie, was back in the 1912-13 season, uh, that run was 10 consecutive league wins. Um, there was actually a run of 11 because there was a cup game in there as well. Obviously, we can't go for oh, that. Oh, yeah, record. of course, yeah. The league ones we are. Uh, but Burnley, as you said, could equal that milestone with a victory this Saturday. Uh, and we also need to score at least one goal on Saturday to equal another club record of scoring in 20 con 27 consecutive league games. We've done 26 already. 27 is the club record for which has stood since 1926. So we could equal that as well. Oh, wow. That's interesting. That is a good start. Well, there you are, listeners. That is our preview of this weekend's championship fixture. It's Burnley versus North End at Turf Moor. Can the Clarets equal their club record? Can they equal Norwich's championship record of 10 consecutive wins on the bounce? And can the Clarets take one step closer to? promotion the championship and the premier league we will find out the known and ever podcast is brought to you in association with the talk sport fan network natalie bromley is the host and editor and the show is produced by matt moss our resident statistician is dave roberts and our fpl expert is adam dennett the analysis show team is collectively tom whittaker richard Steele, george Poole, charlotte rigby adam dennett and robbie Kopak. Our music is provided by George Gaskill and our newsletter team is headed up by Jamie Smith. If you don't already, you can subscribe to our newsletter by visiting nonadnever.substack.com. Our thanks as ever go to our partners TalkSport. We are as ever proud to be part of the TalkSport fan network. <laughs>